Live from the studios of NBC 12 and ABC 25, this is Good Morning Jacksonville at 6.30. And right now at 6.30, a massive search is on for a two-year-old girl who may be in danger. Deputies say Skyla Wilson was taken by her father, Michael Wilson, who does not have custody. They may be heading to Fernandina Beach. They may be there now. He drives a black Kia Soul. If you see them, call 911. Red, white, and gold. Connor Dwyer and Ryan Lockley are both waking up with gold medals after winning the 4 by 200 meter relay. Phelps was also on the team, and it earned him his 21st gold medal. He is the most decorated Olympian in history. Number three story of the morning for you, of course. Summer <laughs> vacation over for thousands of local students. Some parents over the moon. She's literally jumping over the moon. It's a picture of a mom celebrating as her one, two, three, four, five children are going off to school. You know what? I don't blame her. This picture has gone viral. Coming up at 645, Shelby Danielson is live with what students must know. I just love every picture's caught her midair. Lindsay Boach, that's not easy. Oh my Good gosh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Parents, make sure you're sending us your back to school photos of your kids going back to school. I'll share mine from my first day of kindergarten. Uh, I had a fanny pack and a backpack. I was ready to go. St. John's County going back to school, 78 degrees this morning, 85 by lunch, 86 and heading into the afternoon. We have a few afternoon showers that we'll be watching, uh, mainly about 6 o'clock. It looks like the timing on these is going to be a little bit later than we saw uh, the past few days. Radar is dry right now. Any shower activity we have will come from the south, and we'll time that out for you coming up in about 10 minutes. That low pressure system is moving off to the west. Temperatures right now in the low to mid 70s for the most part. And again, we will warm up heading through the rest of the day. Dry to work 77 at 8 o'clock. I'm going to give you a yellow light going home because of the chance for some of those scattered showers. 86 degrees though at 5 o'clock. Let's go to Katie Jeffries in the Vice Star Credit Union Traffic Center following a crash this morning, Katie. That's right, and I do have some good news, a good update here. So this is 95 northbound. This is that crash that occurred that was blocking two lanes. They've been able to move it over to the side. So now traffic is moving a little slower than normal, but at least it's moving past that area. Again, that's 95 northbound. We're not seeing that big delay anymore. Just past Old St. Augustine Road. Be careful for that on the right side of the road. Also in St. John's County, North Holmes Boulevard, Deer Run Road. We had a crash there, but the roadway is clear. St. John's, Nassau, Baker, Bradford, uh, uh, Putnam all going back to school Flagler. So please be careful and expect some heavier than normal traffic in those counties today. Back to you. Thanks for that, Katie. Well, it appears there may be a serial armed robber on the first coast on the loose. Another auto parts store has been hit this time in St. Johns County off of US 1 South. Deputies say the suspect stole a white van and left the scene in that van. The first armed robbery happened over the weekend in Orange Park at Advanced Auto Discount Store. Police say he held four people at gunpoint. Detectives say the two cases are possibly related. If you know anything, you're urged to please call 911. And developing now, the search is on for answers after a bizarre story near Fort Myers. Police say they accidentally shot and killed a woman. This was during a Citizen Police Academy drill. Katie Jeffries joins us now with a look at what happened. A horrible accident almost seems like an understatement. Today, Punta Gorda Police Chief Tom Lewis, along with the FDLE, are trying to figure out why a live round was used in what was supposed to be simulated role play. Now, two participants were randomly selected at the Punta Gorda Citizens Police Academy to participate. Mary Knowlton was somehow shot with a live round and killed. Chief Lewis, visibly upset during the press conference about this, says everyone involved is in a state of shock and grief. During the first scenario, in a horrible accident, participant Mary Knowlton was mistakenly struck with a live round. She was transported to Lee Memorial Hospital, where she was pronounced deceased. The FDLE is there investigating, and the officer involved is on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Lewis. A local woman who was engaged to be married had her dreams shattered by a horrific accident, and then one of her wedding vendors only added to that grief. Back in October, Sarah Meek's fiance, Adam Banicki, a UPS driver, was killed in a car crash. Two of her vendors were compassionate, offered a refund, but Jacksonville Wedding Services did not. That's when she says the next few days became a painful war of words. Told me that no reputable company would refund that type of money, um, that people die all the time and that Adam's death was no different than my mother passing away. And why are you forcing me to, to keep reliving 
you know, this, this situation. I, I, want, I want this to end. I want this to be over. I'm grieving. I'm sad. So here's the deal. Meek actually canceled the contract eight months before the wedding date. The contract required six months. Meek filed suit, got that vendor's attention. Finally, he gave her a refund to settle the lawsuit and agreed to pay attorney's fees as well. Some help is on the way for the Georgia mother whose twin girls died in a hot car last week. Tyler Perry is now offering to pay for the funeral. Police say the 15 month old twins Ariel and Lena were left in the car by their father who was drunk. The mother was visiting family in the hospital at the time of the incident and said that she could not afford to bury them. 636 is your time this Wednesday morning and new for you this morning. Two Disney World workers are recovering after a, a bit of a scary mishap during a performance of Fantasmic. The dopey character, one of the classic seven dwarfs, fell from the top railing right onto Goofy. Aww. Goofy was marching below, minding his business. They had an ambulance called out, but the workers weren't seriously hurt. They their pride a little bit. Dopey being dopey. Well, it's a story that thousands of people are still talking about on Twitter. Tim Tebow is now considering playing professional baseball. This morning, we've got some video of Tebow playing baseball at Nice High School back in 2005 in Ponte Vigia. Check this out. He had a batting average of .494 as a junior. According to ESPN, Tebow was playing the workout with major league teams later this month. That's what he plans on doing. Tebow's NFL career officially came to an end last year after being released from the Philadelphia Eagles. A Phoenix woman is issuing a warning for all people who have frayed iPhone or iPad chargers. She says it's to blame for setting her living room on fire. Nadine Atkinson says she plugged her iPad in, left to run some errands, came home to find her roommate extinguishing a fire. The couch was charred, a hole was burned in the hardwood floor, and a couple of paintings on her wall were burned. Again, that cord was frayed, she says, and she's now trying to warn others so they don't end up losing their things to a fire or worse. Right now, there are more than a thousand reviews on Apple's website that list similar complaints of quickly worn charging cords as well. Okay, so a dangerous case of road rage all caught on camera. What police say happened before this woman pulls out a gun. Wow. And wait for me, uh -oh. the unbelievable thing that one man did after he missed his flight. You're going to want to catch this. Your time now, 6.38, and we will be right back. Yeah, sure, they'll stop Don't the plane leave. for you. They'll stop. I mean, just come on out and drop the door down. <laughs> come on in. Sorry, we, we missed it. And welcome back 40 minutes past the hour coming up tonight on NBC 12. It's all about the Olympics. We've got coverage from Rio starting at 8 and running all the way through midnight. Then be sure to stick with us for First Coast News at 11 for all of your local headlines. 640 is your time on this Wednesday. Back to school for Nassau, Baker, Bradford, Flagler, St. John's, and Putnam counties this morning. Here's a look at your forecast for Nassau County. 74 degrees, 91 as you head home, and a chance for some afternoon showers, mainly after about 5 and 6. So we'll time it all out for you here on Futurecast. Dry through the morning, dry through most of the day, but once we get into 430, see those showers starting to creep into our Putnam County uh, area, southern Putnam County, and into southern Clay County, and that will continue to push to the north. By the time we get to 8 o'clock, only a few spotty showers, and then dry overnight into your Thursday. Starting Thursday with mostly sunny skies, and we'll see a few more showers Thursday afternoon as well. Temperatures throughout the rest of the day getting into the lower 90s. Let's go to Katie Jeffries in the Vice Star Credit Union Traffic Center. She's looking at the roads. Hey, Katie. Yep, I'm watching 95 very closely. This is 95 northbound. This accident was blocking lanes. We sent out a text alert about it. It's been moved over into the right shoulder here, but still be careful when you pass by because people are outside of their vehicles. Elsewhere on our roadways, you can see those delays not present anymore on 95 northbound near Old St. Augustine Road. But if you are getting out the door, just be careful. A lot of kids headed back to school today. Uh, I-10 looks good from Baldwin 301 to 295 is only about 10 minutes. Nassau County headed back to school today. I-95, State Road 200 and US-17 all look good in Nassau at the moment, but expect heavier traffic than normal in St. John's, Nassau, Baker, Bradford and Flagler counties. Back to you. Uh, thanks, Katie. From the streets to the skies, we all know that missing your flight can be a real headache and it's happened to is the man actually was allowed to get onto the plane. Dot dot dot. Wait for it. He then got arrested when the plane landed. <laughs> Jeez. Um, all right. Well, a Scottish man is now suing Warner Brothers for false advertisement. Here's why. He claims the trailers for the new movie Suicide Squad heavily feature Jared Leto's Joker, but he's barely in the movie. 
He claims he drove 300 <sighs> miles to London to see the movie, only to learn the Joker was in the movie about 15 minutes. The fan apparently complained to the theater about the unjust act. That's what he calls it. He requested a full refund, but guess what happened? Got kicked out. Yeah. Had it coming. Sorry. Gotta Come go. Come on, man. Whatever. <laughs> Everybody knows the trailer's not like that. All right, 43 minutes now past the hour. And talk about an exciting night. Gold medal after gold medal. It was beautiful for Team USA. Coming up in two minutes. Team yeah. USA bear, baby. <laughs> the good luck bear. We're live in Rio with all of the action and hey. your, local, your local stars. Oh, there they are. Hey. Chris. <laughs> Love that. And the gates to Fruit Cove Middle School are wide open. One of several schools now open today. It's only, let's see. T minus like 65 minutes till summer break is officially over or until school starts again. We're going to have details coming up because this is an exciting day. Stay with us. Somebody, anybody, please. Hey, welcome in. Back to Rio. <laughs> Peaking down Rio de Janeiro. Day 5, 645 is your time of the Olympics. And a lot of action happening today. All right, gymnastics, they sure. did an awesome job. And our swimmers as well, they really shined. Yep. Let's head to Rio now to Chris Porter and Jeannie Blaylock to see how things are going out there. Hey, guys. Good hey guys, morning. you know, first of all, I want to say thank you, Lou, and thank you, Keitha, for sending us the kind messages you've been sending us, telling us what a great job we're doing. We really appreciate it because, as you know, the Olympics is not a sprint, but a marathon. Meanwhile, here, it's a little dreary, a little wet, but still, we're having a good time here in Rio and the United States gymnastic team. Oh, they dominate last night, and the team all around. Let's take you to the action to show you how it went down, my friends. The final five, as they've dubbed themselves, led by three-time world champion, Simone Bowles blew past the competition. They finished more than eight points in front of the runner-up, Russia. Bowles joined by Ali Raisman, Lori Hernandez, Gabby Douglas, and Madden, pardon me, Madison Koshan. I don't know, tonight doesn't feel real. Even I know it was the Olympics, but it didn't feel like it because we've been training so hard for this. So we just thought of it as one more routine, and I think that's what we all did, but it's very unreal right now. Now to the selfie that embodies the Olympic spirit. Uh, gymnasts, two of them from South Korea, North Korea, took some selfies uh, during the training period of uh, their event, and it has just gone wild all over social media. This is interesting because, you know, both of these uh, two countries, they got some tension there, but um, everybody's loving it, and good job, and it kind of embodies what the Olympics <laughs> is all about. Put your differences aside. And, and just have a good time. Yeah, and talk about a good time in the pool last night. Oh, wow, what a night for Team USA. You know, so much attention on Michael Phelps, and for good reason. He's 31 years old, 25 Olympic medals now. He deserves it, right? But also, guys, we got to give attention to Connor Dwyer, Gator graduate, University of Florida. He won a gold last night, too, in that relay with Phelps, and he's won another in Rio. So two medals for him in Rio. Here's what he's saying. Uh, that was incredible. I just wanted to uh, dive in and, and try and get these guys a lead. Uh, it's something special and a lot of tradition in that relay, and um, that was just an incredible experience. And turns out he is a big fan of Taylor Swift. Went to her concert. Here's the photo from Los Angeles. And I've gotten to interview Connor twice now here. And I'll tell you something, that he is cool as a cucumber. That's probably why he is so good. And he's yep. always patient and always polite. And my favorite tidbit about Connor as a mom of twins is he's a twin. And he says he has a huge Irish family. He has 35 first cousins. More than 40 of them went to London. And he says even more are down here in Rio cheering him on. So hooray for Connor and University of Florida. Lots of gold coming into those athletes from UF. I always leave it to, up to Dr. Blaylock for it always in. Uh, insightful did you know that's it <laughs> like from that. rio for now hopefully the sun will come out and shine we'll see you later on today our live coverage will begin at five and happening right now an endangered child alert has been issued for a missing two-year-old girl authorities say she was taken by her father who doesn't have custody of her and they could be heading our Way. Take a look at your screen. I just got off with authorities in Tennessee. They say they could be in a number of places, including Fernandina Beach and Orlando. This is Michael Wilson. Investigators say he could be armed. They say Wilson took his daughter from her home in Tennessee Sunday, and she hasn't been seen or heard from since. Authorities are also looking for Wilson's car. It's a 2014 Kia Soul with Tennessee tag V2631U. 
Skyla Wilson, two foot four, weighs 24 pounds, last seen wearing a green blouse with a stripe across it and green and white shorts. We've learned a warrant for kidnapping has been issued for her father's arrest. Again, please keep your eyes peeled for a 2014 Kia Soul Tennessee tag V2631U. And of course, if you see Wilson's vehicle or Skyla, call 911. In the Information Center, Lisa Robbins, First Coast News. All right, back to school for Nassau, Baker, Bradford, Flagler, St. John's, Putnam counties. And taking a look at Baker County this morning, 73 degrees, 89 by the time we get to lunch, and then 90 after school, starting with mostly sunny skies. A few more clouds later on and then a few showers possible, mainly in the evening. So after the kids are already home from school, especially out towards Baker County. Current temperatures right now, we're in the lower to mid 70s, 79 at St. Simons Island, 77 in Fernandina. Other than that, Again, right around 72, 73 degrees throughout the rest of the morning, 77 to 8 o'clock, 88 by noon and then 89 by 4 o'clock. Our high temperature today right at about 90 degrees. We'll see more sun this morning, a few less clouds this morning, and then the chance for those showers and storms later on this afternoon. Out toward the beach, temperatures just a little bit cooler, still right around 87 degrees with those seas at 2 to 4 feet, surf at 2 feet with a 6 second swell, and those winds out of the south southeast at 5 to 10 knots. 90 degrees on Thursday, 90 on Friday, a few showers Thursday, Friday, early morning showers on Saturday, but we should dry out Saturday afternoon into Sunday, and then we're drier as we start next week. Katie Jeffries is standing by in the Vice Star Credit Union Traffic Center. Hey, Katie. Hey, good morning. So we got another crash on 95 northbound. This one is in the San Marco area. So this is 95 northbound. This is that exit to the main street and the Acosta bridges there in the left lane. We've got a crash and it is causing a bit of a delay. It's backed up right now towards uh, Atlantic Boulevard. So you are going to add about a 10 minute, maybe 15 minute delay there. 95 northbound those exits for the Acosta and Main Street Bridge. That right lane there is blocked. So be careful if you got the alert about 95 northbound near Old St. Augustine Road. One of our text alerts. They have moved that crash onto the right shoulder, so we're not seeing delays there anymore. Elsewhere on your road, Roadways. A lot of schools headed back. St. Augustine, you guys are still looking pretty nice at the moment, but a reminder, traffic is going to be heavier on those roadways as kids go back to school. Remind your kids if they walk, don't walk with those headphones in. They need to hear oncoming traffic. Also, use caution in school zones, especially Racetrack Road. That tends to be a problem spot in St. John's County. Please be careful in school zones. Watch out for walkers and watch out for bus stops. Every year, unfortunately, at the start of school, we always have some type of child that is hit by a car. It's awful. Please talk to your kids about safety and always use those crosswalks. Back to you. Okay, Katie, thank you. Now to some other top stories for you right now. Back to school for those five counties just mentioned by the ladies there all across the first coast. Shelby Danielson live in St. John's County, just one of them. Big one, biggest in the state with what students can expect. Hey, Shelby. Hey there, good morning. I love back to school days. Brings back fond memories of being in detention with my little brother most of the time, which was kind of embarrassing, but also football fields brings back memories of football, sporting activities, after school activities. I love back to school and you can see the gates here at Fruit Cove Middle School are wide open as parents are about to enter in here. You're about to kick off that school year, but we're going to talk a little bit about St. John's County because the school district there is getting a little bit of a shakeup. Dr. Joseph Joyner, he is leaving or retiring as the superintendent there after 13 years. He says it's for a couple of reasons. One, he says his wife is kind of happy he's retiring. I can understand that after 13 years. And he says he doesn't want to be, well, and this is a, in his own words, the guy who hung around. But he is leaving the district in great shape. The test scores and graduation rates is high. Teacher turnover is low. And St. John's County remains one of only five school districts in the entire state of Florida to earn an A great uh, great grade sorry for 11 years in a row and that's amazing now if you head now this is kind of more for the parents of course if you head to st john's county school district website he actually wrote uh, a welcome back letter and it actually has information about zika and other important things uh, kind of going on in the community right now important for us here of course in florida so head to their website check that out and of course welcome back to the first day of school back to you guys Thanks for that, Shelby. Well, more than 50 chickens will be examined this morning after they were rescued from an alleged cockfighting ring. They were found in a home on the west the northwest side. Officials say knives and other equipment would be used. They were placed on that chicken so they could do more damage in the fight. One person has been arrested. A ship carrying El Faro's black box is heading back to Mayport right now. The device was finally found yesterday. This it was more than 15,000 feet below the surface. 
The ship sank during a hurricane back in October, Hurricane Joaquin. 33 people were on board that ship and all perished. The ship carrying the VDR is expected to arrive sometime Friday to Mayport. Governor Scott has announced four new cases of Zika spread by mosquitoes in Miami. That means there are now 21 people who contracted the virus locally. Hillary Clinton was in Miami just yesterday and she's calling on Congress to immediately return to Washington to provide emergency funding for Zika testing, treatment and research. Happening right now, the search is on for this gun wielding woman after a road rage incident in Gainesville. Take a look. Police say the black pickup truck shown in the video actually followed the victim into the Chevron parking lot. And as you can see from there, things got heated and guns were drawn. Look, she's got it. She's kind of waving around. She's going to hit somebody with it. If you have any information, you were asked to contact police. And it's just, you know, a competitive thing, honestly. So it's just something you learn from and something you know not to do in the game. Big Cats going back to the practice field today after a bit of a scuffle broke out between Dante Fowler and Chris Reed. Both men shoving each other to the sideline, grabbing, swiping. Had a couple of moments there for several yards. And of course, the fight not a smart move. Gus Bradley says things like that will happen, though, when you spend too much time going against each other in practice and not guys in different colored uniforms, which will be happening now very, very soon. We'll start mm -hmm. scrimmaging the bucks. All, All right. right, last check of our weather and our traffic before we go back to school. Yeah, we got kids going back to school this morning. Should be good. Showers should hold off until after those kids get back from school. Temperatures right around 90. Delays 95 northbound as you approach the exit for the main and Acosta Bridge. You've got a crash with injuries in the right lane, so that's backing up traffic. Also, expect heavier than normal traffic in all of those counties going back to school. Watch out for school zones. Lou, I am loving those gator colors today. I'm Don't start. You. I did. It was in it. Works. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I will, I'm channeling my inner UF just doing my best. It looks so nice. Whatever. <laughs> uh, with all the gold medals that came in. I'm University of South Carolina through and through. I'm bringing Garnet and Black back tomorrow. All right, whatever. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at noon. <laughs> Tina Mitchell.